Welcome to Markets Now. I'm Michelle Rucker along with Dwayne Bussey with Bolt Marketing. Well, livestock futures started off higher this morning, but have since turned mixed and grains some early pressure, but we are down except for the soybeans have tried to come back here. And boy, it's been a wild week, has it not in the grains, Dwayne? Yeah, it's been unbelievable. Um, yeah, a week ago, I couldn't give you any bullish news in corn. The only thing I could have sold told you about the bullish story for corn is I would have told you that the market is oversold. And that was it. There was no weather scare. There definitely wasn't a Russia-Ukraine situation. But oddly enough, that that deal really spiked the markets up this week. I think this was driven a lot by the Elgros, the trading programs that look for headlines that are bullish or bearish. And they don't really care how much if they're right or wrong. They just try to get in before the rest of the market does. And they really push this corn market higher this week. No doubt. We got above the 100 day. We got above that 50 percent retracement mark on December mm -hmm. corn. But now we're seeing what some profit taking set in here because we've had like an 80 cent rally here in a very short amount of time, haven't we? Oh, I think you're exactly right today. You know, the, the overnight session started moderately lower. It looked like, OK, maybe we've seen the high. And and on these story headlines, these headline pushes, it's usually about a three day move. And sure enough, we'd had our three days. Now, Russia was still in there bombing the key Odessa port in Ukraine overnight. But I didn't hear much about it overnight. It's almost stories are faded very quickly in the futures market. So we were sold off. But then right at the 830 opening, we actually rallied all the way back to unchanged. And I think that was your managed funds getting out of a few short positions before the weekend, because none of us know what's going to happen with Russia and Ukraine over the weekend. So a whole lot of position squaring going on today. Yeah. And then you and I have talked about the fact that would have corn run as much as it did just on weather, or was it this combination of funds being short in the corn market and the fact that wheat was moving higher in the whole war situation? I, I think it was a lot of the Russian war situation. I really yeah. think it was more the headline traders, the Algros pushing it. You know, you think about the hot dry forecast we have helped it. It assisted in the rally, no doubt. But if we had this hot dry forecast July 3rd, we wouldn't have rallied the 90 cents that we did from low to high here this week. Uh, it is definitely more than just the weather. So is weed also seeing profit taking? Because uh, one of the headlines that I did see this morning was that Turkey was going to try to come in and maybe help uh, get some exports moving out of Russia or Ukraine or somewhere anyways. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we market rallied a long ways. And yeah, there's some news that Turkey's going to try to help. And Russia's even said themselves that they want to keep the export corridor open for the poor countries, which if you remember in past times when we've got to this situation, that's Russia's usually go to statement, right? They're they're not trying to close grain and, and create a food store shortage to the world. They want to keep the poor countries going. And, you know, so over the weekend, it, it wouldn't shock me to see Russia come up with some sort of agreement with Turkey and Ukraine to get some bushels moved out. Russia doesn't want to continue to bomb the Odessa port. And, you know, they threatened at one point to sink, you know, any ship that was in the territory. Well, they don't want to sink a ship full of wheat and that was destined to some African country or something. You know, they don't want to do that and start to World War Three. So I wouldn't be shocked if over the weekend there's some sort of agreement and then maybe we trade that headline lower next week. But that's just me just guessing, of course. It's really hard to predict that. Yeah. And funds were short in that Chicago wheat market. And boy, they had to blow out of some of those <laughs> positions this week, didn't they? Nobody says the funds have to make money in this market. And yeah, they were caught on the wrong side there. We rallied sharply. And now, of course, now we're correcting sharply. There was another statement overnight, too, that just talked about the fact that Russian wheat is still $45 a ton cheaper than French wheat. And of course, French wheat is cheaper than our wheat. So do we really have to rally our wheat prices here if we're not exporting any? And I guess I'd have to say, no, we really don't have to. Well, and that was going to be my next question to you was, We've seen this situation before where there's been this export disruption. It hasn't translated into business for the United States, has it? No, it really hasn't. And the difference with this one here, this Russia-Ukraine war this past week, is it didn't escalate into a lot of panic buying from other countries where they pushed the cash market up. Actually, it was fairly quiet this week in the world cash market. And shipments out of the Black Sea were down 35% this week. Well, that's a lot. But in one way, I thought the number would be even worse. So, yeah, it's not that just because Russia bombed Ukraine and and hit an elevator, you know, I mean, it looks horrible and I'm not trying to downplay it for them in Ukraine. It's horrible, but 
it doesn't mean that we just sold a whole bunch of wheat here that we we are currently harvesting. You know, and you talk to guys in Illinois, Eastern Corn Belt, it's record winter wheat yield. So we got to combat that too. Yeah. And then we have the dollar index back higher today. So I'm sure that's a little bit of a pressuring factor. Although soybeans are coming back. And of course, uh, the soybean oil and meal market um, and weather have all kind of helped pull, pull that market back higher, you think? Yeah, especially the soybean oil market. Um, uh, interesting trade there. I mean, we've just keep trending higher. It seems to be following the rest of kind of the energy markets. Crude oil was in a narrow range, you know, below $70. Now we're in mid 70s. And, you know, fossil fuels have rallied as well. Diesel fuel, gas is up. Um, they all kind of the charts all look the same. And the soybean oil thing's interesting. I think when that when we found out we don't have as many soybean acres as we thought, I think this veg oil market started to catch wind of like, uh oh, we've got a lot more demand coming down the road, or at least we're anticipating that. So I think the the traders are out there buying that soybean oil, oil market pretty hard. And that's helping pull soybeans up as well. Yeah. And we need to hold the $14 mark in the November beans, though, today, don't we? We're just flirting with it or above it. For the technicians, it would sure be nice. You know, yeah. I think we talked last week about we really don't have to go above 14 unless we have a weather scare. Well, for soybeans, we got the weather scare this week. There's no doubt. But what's the weather going to be like next week, Michelle? I, I know farmers get frustrated at times. You know, I could easily see next week where we do have a 100 degree temp on a Monday or Tuesday and the market's down because we're trading next week's forecast. So it was the hot dry forecast that got us up to 14. You're going to need to see that continue to keep the upward momentum going. But soybeans are tight. Don't get me wrong with these decrease in acres. If you reduce the yield at all due to hot dry weather in August, the soybean situation gets very interesting. Yeah. Noah's weather forecast or the 30 day yesterday did look a little wetter and maybe a little cooler, but boy, that's a long ways away yet. So it, it is. Those extended yeah. forecasts are hard to trust too, of course. Cattle market. So we make new contract all time highs in the August yesterday mm -hmm. in the live cattle futures with higher cash trade. Yeah. And then we have a reversal, but boy, these things don't hold. We're back up with some higher cash trade again here today. Yeah. Um, we got reports today. Is that why we keep going back and forth or what's going on? Yeah, I think it's mostly just profit taking today. And, you know, okay. yeah, another key reversal on the chart, right? I, I think last week we talked about that and I thought, yeah, it's it's the time of year it would make sense for the cattle market to put in a high and trend lower until we get to the fall spike up. But evidently the cash cattle inventory is just that tight because packers keep paying up for cash cattle which justifies higher futures markets and and now actually the cash market is getting to be at a decent premium to this august board after we had the key reversal again yesterday so i guess i'm not buying the key reversal again michelle <laughs> maybe there's just more to this cattle market more bullishness than i thought and maybe we can keep grinding higher yeah you and i have talked about whether the technicals really matter when you're in this tight of a supply situation and maybe we just answered our own questions so, i think so yeah no doubt and we do have kettle inventory kettle on feed today that'll again looks like it's going to confirm these tight supplies you and i just talked about yeah that's what the trade estimates are you know lower cattle inventory year over year that's pretty much an easy statement and the cattle and feed report same thing looking beyond feed down you know that two percent i'm hoping marketing can be a little bit higher than the 95.5 percent estimate i'm really hoping for a 96 or higher there because it, it looks to me like demand is staying strong you know even though choice cutouts are still about 300 you know the supermarket prices aren't horrible it, it depends where you go but you can still get some good quality meat at decent prices and i think that's kept demand going this summer yeah the cash market on the hogs has sustained much longer than anticipated, and that's helped mm -hmm. support uh, this rally that we've had in the hog futures. You know, how much more upside is there? Is there demand enough there to keep it going? Well, there should be because of partly what I just mentioned, the, you know, the higher price for the beef in the supermarket, which, like I said, isn't horrible, but it's still a higher price cut of meat than pork, right? So. You know, due to that, I think we can keep that demand going on the pork side. Yeah, the cash market, wow, just in general, what an amazing recovery from a month or two ago when it felt like hogs were going to go to zero. And now it feels like they can never pull back, which don't say that because the markets do that. But right now, the trend is your friend and it's higher in hogs and cutouts and cash keep going higher. So I'll follow that until that changes. Right. And futures at a discount yet. Right. Futures are at a discount now. Yeah, so that'll hopefully continue to support it for a little while anyways. All right, thanks for joining us.
That is Dwayne Bussey with Bolt Marketing, and that's Markets Now.